It was last gasp heartbreak for Ferrari in qualifying, as Antonio Giovinazzi lost pole position after the chequered flag fell due to track limits. Kamui Kobayashi inherited pole, the first for car 7 this season, with a 2 minute point eight one two, over 2 seconds quicker than Toyota went around Spa last season. Toyota will sandwich the hypercar grid, with Brendan Hartley failing to set a lap after going off at Radion on his outlap on cold tyres, re-sparking the debate over whether the ban on tyre warmers has actually helped costs or the environment. Kobayashi also came out on top in free practice 3, which started in wet conditions but dried dramatically near the end to see times tumble in the last few minutes. Just 24 thousandths of a second behind Kobayashi was Miguel Molinar in the 50 Ferrari, who possibly lost an even better lap after being caught behind Fred Makovecki in a slower Porsche. Molinar ended up with two purple sectors, but the 10th loss to Kobayashi in sector 2 would prove costly. Giovinazzi will start from 3rd on the grid, but looked to have snatched pole. He was out of the car celebrating by the time he lost his lap to track limits at turn 7. He may not have gained an advantage by running wide through the gravel, but a zero tolerance policy is used in qualifying. The good news for Ferrari is they seem to have yet again closed in on Toyota, and will be looking to take the fight to them tomorrow. Cadillac were a fighting force in qualifying for the first time this season, with Earl Bamba qualifying fourth, just two tenths down on pole, and Sebastian Bourdais putting the number three car fifth on the grid. So far this season, the Cadillac has been stronger in the races than over one lap, which puts them in a great position for tomorrow. Porsche Penske Motorsport will line up 6th and 10th, with Kevin Estra qualifying the car on the third row. Porsche are another who have made a step forward this weekend, and Makovecki will be disappointed with how qualifying went for the 5 crew. Porsche Penske also had an announcement after qualifying concluded, unveiling the livery that the 75 car will run at the 24 hours of Le Mans this year. Hertz Team Jota are the first of two incredible underdog stories on row 4 of the grid, with Will Stevens putting the car they only had delivered last week in 7th. The race will be a different test, but splitting the works cars on debut is a very promising start, and they must fancy their chances at picking up a factory scalp tomorrow. Glickenhaus Racing will join them, Olivier Pla putting the American mark 8th. Glickenhaus have made yet another leap in performance compared to Portimao, and will be looking to take the fight to the hybrids in the race. The most disappointed team tonight, other than the 51 Ferrari camp, will be Peugeot Total Energies, who line up 9th and 11th with both cars over 2 seconds off the pace. But the quest for them shouldn't be pace, and instead seeing if both cars can have reliable runs, including the laps to the grid, for the first time. And Floyd Van Waal Racing Team complete the hypercar roster, with Tom Dillman qualifying 12th for them. The best news so far on a weekend which has looked disappointing is they seem to no longer have an obvious weak link, as before qualifying began, Jacques Villeneuve was actually the quickest of their three drivers. Tom Blomqvist took pole position in LMP2 for United Autosports USA, beating Louis Delatraz and Daniel Kvyat. LMP2 was yet again by far the closest class, with last place just 1.1 seconds off pole. In LMGTM, Ahmed El Harty ended Sarah Bovey and Ben Keating's stranglehold on the front row with a dominant display, taking pole by 1.9 seconds in by far the best showing we've seen from Aston Martin this season. Bovey will start from second on the grid, with Ryan Hardwick lining up third for Proton competition and Keating fourth. After yesterday's accident, the 21 AF Corsa Ferrari of Diego Alessi was unable to take part in qualifying, and Alessi also has a 30 second stop and go penalty for the race after being deemed responsible for the collision at the end of free practice two. Another team with hard work tonight is Team Project One, after PJ Hyatt crashed heavily in qualifying. PJ is okay, but it's going to be a long night as they try to get ready for the race tomorrow. It currently looks like this year will be drier than in years past, but a shower or two shouldn't be ruled out. If it is to rain, it looks like hour one is the most likely time for it to happen, which could mean some frantic decision on tyres in the early going. 
This makes keeping an eye to the sky one of the keys to the race, as well as outlaps, which will be absolutely treacherous. But yet again, the main thing is to have a clean run and ensure you maximise running before Le Mans. The next time these cartons meet the public eye will be the Le Mans test day. The opposition have looked the closest they've been to Toyota, and the big question is going to be whether any of them can maintain a challenge over the race duration. Given the head start they'll have on the number 8, you'd imagine some of them would fancy their chances at managing to split them, at least for a few hours. Who do you think will win the 6 hours of Spa? Please let me know in the comments below, and while she's down there why not press that like button, or subscribe and join the road to 1k, it really helps me out.